On 5 October 2018, the government of Zimbabwe introduced the Transitional Stabilization Program, TSP, with the aim of stimulating the economic growth and stabilizing the macroeconomic uh, situation in the country. Now, the TSP ran under the theme towards a prosperous and empowered upper middle income society by 2030. It is ending uh, in December 2020 this year. To discuss this and other related issues, I am joined by two economic analysts uh, on this episode of our weekly program, In Depth. My name is Ian Wamben. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right, I'll start with you. I want you to introduce yourself, starting with you uh, to my immediate right. Okay, thank you, Ian. My name is Titus Mukwave, and I'm an economic analyst. Yes. Uh, my name is Vince Musewe, and I'm also an economist. Right. I will start with you, Mr. Musewe. Yeah. What is the general assessment of the TSP? In my view, the, the TSP has succeeded in two areas, uh, mm -hmm. specifically, uh, being, for example, to control government expenditure uh, and make sure, you know, we, we have reduced the amount of non-productive expenditure within government. Um, and also beginning to, to spend some of the money in the infrastructure side. But we'll go through that, obviously, as time goes on. Yes. So for me, those are the two areas that I would say that for, uh, the TSP has, has been successful. On the other issues, I mean, we can discuss, particularly on the values, uh, the value system under which uh, the TSP must be effective and implemented. Mm. We, are, we are obviously getting into details of that, but out of 10, what mark would you give it? Well, I'll give it to you, Mr. Mkowe. Okay, thank you very much. As a country, we need to do a, we need to have a holistic approach on the TSP <coughs> and its successes and the challenges that it, it faced, actually. So we need to have a, a, an analysis prior to the TSP, prior to the appointment of um, Tulingwe as the Minister of Finance. What was the economy, what was the direction the economy was taking? And like we have rightfully pointed out that the TSP was actually implemented in October 2018. is a transition uh, to the national development strategy that the government will partake in 2021 to 2025 and 2026 to 2030 and um for, for in terms of the successes of the tsp i would actually take especially on the on the aspect of stabilization the tsp has done well in actually stabilizing the economy when it comes to issues of growth yes it missed the targets due to due to external due, due to exogenous factors but in terms of bringing stability i think uh, the tsp has, has laid the, the the necessary foundation for the economy mm -hmm. out of 10 how would you rate it out of 10 in terms of stabilization i would give it uh seven out of 10 but in terms of the uh, meeting the targets of growth uh, i think uh, the, the, there is room for improvement but like i've said there are exogenous factors that have actually hindered the country in achieving the growth targets that we will discuss at the problem so for you the tsp was a success for me the tsp was a success given the conditions that the the, the economy is operating under and other uh, ex exogenous factors like uh like the climatic shocks that the economy has actually experienced in 2019 the cyclone die as well as the, um, the the drought in the western part of the country cyclone die in the eastern part of the country as well as the COVID 19 in 2019 so mm -hmm. under those conditions i would say the tsp has been success it's been a success okay introducing necessary policies institutional reforms as well as to transform a private sector led economy was one of the main objectives of the tsp mr Mse. Uh, was this achieved well if you look under institutional reforms you're not talking about institutional reforms some of the major for example objectives were one budget expenditure control yes making sure that for example there's more control on the budget expenditure that has been achieved reform of public service absolutely not uh you know if you look at the uh, when duly came in 2019 the, the, there were serious ghost workers on the on the on the you know payroll of the public service. I don't know what has happened to date, but we mainly got an issue where only three thousand youth officers were taken off of the you know the payroll, and 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 you know, so to me on reform of the public service, uh, there's still a lot to be done, and also the value system within the particularly performance uh, and capacity to actually uh, produce within the public service. There's still a lot of work to be done. Mm. But what do you think needs to be done there? Well, you know what, what? What we have done really is we still got the same architecture and individuals that used to operate under Mugabe and with the same culture, right? The issue of, of non consequences for non productivity, right? And the issue of skills upgrade. Uh, if you look at some of our public service, the, the culture has not changed significantly. The service delivery consciousness is still not there, and things still take a lot of time to actually get delivered. So those are the issues we have. So I, I would mm -hmm. say a fundamental reform is the issue of a performance culture 
and actually making sure we shed off particularly people who've been in government for ages who continually do things in the old way. So to me, those are key issues that will ensure that we create a competitive environment. Okay. We also have, uh, I, I'm just, if I could just finish the institutional reforms, the issue of uh, state enterprise, uh, state owned enterprises, their restructure reform and privatization. That has dismally failed. There's been claims that you know, this and this is happening. Up to date, we haven't seen much happening. We've actually seen, for example, the NRZ deal was reversed. We've seen the Zisco Steel deal reversed. And we saw CSC, an investor came in and then they get, there's too much chaos there, around there. The issue of devolution, uh, we still have to, you know, to do that, uh, you know, and also dealing with corruption, uh, ease of doing business. You see, there's been some changes regarding, for example, when businesses apply for licenses and whatever, but it's still not easy to do business in Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, we can talk about that later. Mm. And then, just, yeah. just, just the, you mentioned mm. devolution, which yeah. has been described, you know, as a, as a very successful project. There's still a lot of uh, infrastructure development, road constructions, rural councils are getting devolution funds, building schools. How do you? Describe that now. Okay, now what do you, I think let's agree what devolution is. Devolution yes. is actually empowering the provinces. Number one, the provinces must all have their own uh, economic developmental blueprints, mm -hmm. which maximize on their uh, on their endowment, place, resource endowments. And number three, the provinces must have the capacity to actually attract uh, the investment on themselves. In other words, we need autonomous uh, provinces that have got different economies. For example, Manikaland and Mashonal West are two totally different economies and two totally different priorities. We need provinces that actually create local development. We still have a situation where Harare still dominates a lot when it comes to contracts, when it comes to business. Uh, so mm -hmm. to me, devolution on paper sounds nice, but fundamentally, there's still a lot to be done. Mr. Mko, you have read what he said. What is your response to that? Okay, my response to that is that um, I would like to focus on the on the positives, but I would like to concur with him on on, on the other aspects of the TSP that the government actually missed in terms of institutional reforms and uh, restructuring of the state on the enterprises. But I, I guess it's still a work in progress. We've seen uh, certain reforms in within soap. We've seen certain reforms within the energy sector. Yes, sir. And um, it's, it's something commendable, like I said, given the conditions that the economy is actually operating in. But from the TSP, uh, the, 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 the positives that I've actually picked from the TSP is actually the improvement in terms of the containment of the expenditure as well as the revenue enhancement. Uh, we had lots of unnecessary uh, public expenditure prior to the TSP and the minister has been able to actually contain that, which is a positive. And that is actually dri driven the economy towards the fiscal consolidation, uh, which the minister has actually uh, achieved. We have seen him actually dealing with the, the, the perennial twin uh, in the economies, that is the, the budget deficit as well as the current account deficit, uh, where the economy is now operating uh, closer to, to, to a balanced budget and the current account has actually moved to the surplus in the last quarter of 2019, mm -hmm. which is a positive from TSP. We have actually noted improvements in the infrastructure and utilities, the resurfacing of the major highways, which link us to our major trading partners, South Africa, Botswana, ETC, as well as um, <coughs> the, 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 the a drive towards um, towards the devaluation. It's actually discussed in detail um, in, in terms of devaluation. But we have seen government now putting effort towards the devaluation, unlike what, uh, unlike the unlike just talking which was done prior to, 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 to TSP. But now we are seeing action but of course there is room for improvement in terms of the de devolution but we are actually seeing the government actually putting action so like mm -hmm. i have said on a scale of 10 in terms of stability um the tsp has brought up about stability I, I can also add in terms of the of the of the monetary reforms we've seen uh the 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 the, the, the resuscitation of the monetary policy the con the, the government the mean the minister and the central bank coming up uh, with the, the monetary policy committee that are managing the the country's uh, money supply growth which in long term actually helps in actually stabilizing uh, the, the, the price sector in the, in the economy. At the same time, uh, we, are, we have seen them coming up with, uh, with the necessary reforms to stabilize the exchange rate, which was a real problem and it was, it was driving in, in, in inflation through the introduction of the auction rate system. So in terms of that, uh, I actually uh, I, I say that um, there are some positives that we can actually take from the TSP. Now we take a short break to stay with us.
come back to the second segment of our in-depth program where we are discussing the transitional stabilization program with the two economic analysts. Now, before we went for the break, you made reference to how the TSP has somehow failed in terms of achieving its goals. But let's look at, you know, what the finance minister said. He said that TSP was meant somehow to address infrastructural uh, gaps within the country. Would you say this goal has been achieved? Well, yeah, I mean, let, let us be clear. I, I, I'm not saying it has been an utter failure. What I'm saying is it has not met my expectations from, you know, from what I expected. There's, there's nothing wrong with, with, you know, particularly on the issue of infrastructure. But let me, uh, let me ask you something. We've had these things that my colleague was talking about, you know, the issue of the surplus managing. But what has been the social impact? Has the quality of life of the Zimbabwean changed because of the TSP? That is the question we need to ask because we can get carried away here looking at numbers and looking at percentages. For example, a lot of people have been asking, we've got a surplus, so what? My life is actually deteriorating. A surplus is meaningless. To me, because my life has not improved, has the quality of life of Zimbabweans improved since the TSP has come into play? My answer to that is no. Have we seen significant disposable incomes where individuals create local demand and are able to afford the day-to-day -day kind of living in this economy? My answer to that is that no. Number three, has the quality of infrastructure, particularly within our urban areas, we can boast here that we've got a big highway. But if I haven't got water in the townships, if the urban areas don't have water, if the roads in the urban areas are not sorted out, I am not experiencing whatever the, the minister might be saying he's been successful at. So the social impact of the TSP has been very minimal as far as I'm concerned. Remember, TSP was introduced in 2018 and yes. now it's 2020. Now, I'll just pass on to you, Mr. Mkoyo. How would you respond to what you said? Okay, if I'm to respond to that, um, of course, um, it, it is correct to say that... Um, we haven't seen an impact in terms of uh, the social welfare impact, in terms of the improvement of the livelihood, improvement in terms of the standard of living. But let's take it this way. This is a transitional program. Yeah. It is not the actual problem. This is not the national development strategy. It is actually meant to bring stability to the macroeconomy so that it lays the foundation for it's economic. Yes, it lays the foundation for economic development. And, and if I'm to come to, to if I'm to respond to him again, um, you remember the TSP had two two phases. The mm -hmm. first phase was actually on austerities, and the government was actually quite frank in saying that the first phase is, is, is austerity. And if I'm to define an austerity, it is that um, it is, these are measures by the government that are, that, that are meant to reduce public expenditure and they've got social consequences. So government was actually frank in terms of that. But the 2019 budget, where we are seeing the second phase of the... Um, of the TSP, uh, the government was now moving into another stage where they were actually saying the budget is for, 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 for stimulus economic growth. Unfortunately, the economy faced uh, exogenous factors that have actually affected the, the, the economy. Like I have said, the COVID-19 has slowed down business. So definitely that will impact both the social as well as the economic. So in, in terms of laying the foundation, I think the TSP is actually done enough in the, it, it, in the, under the given circumstances. Mm -hmm. Now, let us talk about uh, launching quick wins to stimulate economic growth in this country, which is exactly what the TSP was all about. Did this work? Have we got economic growth this year? I mean, in 2019, we, we predicted that economic growth would be about 3%. Yes. And this year, obviously, because of this exogenous factor, we're going to have negative growth, right, of about minus 0.3%. Which comes to zero. So from 2019 to 20, if you put the economic growth together, we get zero growth, right? For whatever reason, right? So we can be academic here, right? But the practicalities of the matter, number one, this economy has not grown and created jobs, right? This economy has not created disposable, increased disposable income. The issue about this stability, let us be very clear here. In August, John, the Reserve Bank governor, came up with the auction system. Right and and stifling eco cash, which were fueling uh, uh, the you know foreign exchange transactions on the parallel market, which was in turn fueling inflation and creating a serious challenge with, with regard to disposable mm -hmm. income. The mobile money platform. It has only been three months mm -hmm. that has been that it has been in place, and that is when we have the economic stability, because of the prices have kind of started to come down. 
But that's, remember, it's from August, September, we're in October right now. So when you come to me and say, no, the TSP has stabilized the economy, I don't agree with that at all. It is merely a policy that has been implemented in the last three months where we've stifled, where we've rightly so, stopped echocation speculation on the parallel market. And if we had done that two years ago, we'd be much further than where we are on the issue of inflation, because that has been the major. So if we, if we take that out, Okay, to say that in 2018, that was not even the case. What, what is that going to say? Let's look at the issue with the doctors right now. Salaries and the strikes and the quality of the health services that this economy is delivering. That has deteriorated significantly. Go to some of our hospitals and see what is happening in some of the clinics. Go to the queues at the clinics in the townships of kids, of mothers who want to get their kids treated. It's ridiculous. Walk downtown after hours and see the issue of public transport how people are struggling to get home right and then number three look at the issues of of of, of basically the quality of life of youth yeah we have a significant 60 percent of our youth are most of our youth are totally unemployed and they're going into drugs right so when you come to me and you say you know, things are getting better. I have a serious argument with that. Things haven't gotten better at all, regardless of the of the surplus that you're talking about, regardless of some of the issues. So it's an issue of context. Any economic policy that does not have a positive social impact has failed. You gave the TSP a 7 out of 10. How would you respond to what you said? Okay, if I'm to respond to that, um, he, he has actually articulated on the stability in terms of the exchange rate which yes. is actually said uh, it has only been there for three months but like i said we need to do a holistic analysis what has been stabilized what has not been stabilized if you are to be honest in terms of our assessment the the the, the, the in terms of the fiscal uh, stabilization we have uh, started realizing it in 2019 and um in terms of the current account improvement the way which i have actually said it is moving towards the surplus it was this last quarter of 2019 the stability was always there and like he actually pointed out that uh, any economic policy that does not look into the society is not a, a true reflection of economic policy but my assessment is that if we stabilize the economic sector of the economy there shall be a diffusion in terms of stabilizing the social aspect of the economy because you can't solve them all at once because the economic fundamentals they take time to actually reflect the performance um actually from academics, an assessment actually indicates that the true reflection of economic uh, reform policies can actually, the, 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 the results can actually start to be seen uh, after 18 months or 24 months. So we cannot just rush and actually say the the, the, the TSP was not was not actually a success because of, uh, of of social economic problems. That can be addressed if we address the economic fundamentals because they are the ones that are very important that diffuse into solving the social economic problems. Like for example, if there is growth, if there is growth, will actually drive employment. So if if growth drives employment, will actually be solving other macroeconomic problems. Like yes, I right pointed out, like um like for example poverty. I can summarize all, all the problems that you are you are actually alluding to as poverty but you can only solve poverty if there is growth so you need to give the fundamentals that drives the growth the proper attention so that in time growth can actually start to be realized and other macroeconomic problems as well as social problems like if you articulated to can start to be solved as well we are going to take a short break and we will continue the discussion soon after these words <music> still watching in depth and in our episode today we are discussing the transitional stabilization program that was introduced by the government of zimbabwe in october 2018 and i'm joined by two economic analysts mr vince museve and mr titus Muko. now let's talk about how the tsp is paving way for the national development strategy um as the tsp expires i mean there are obviously uh, uh, developments that the nds can build upon how do you think the NDS should build upon the TSP? I, I think we are not going to see a fundamental change regarding the priorities. Uh, we, we, as you know, as one would look at it, there are two issues that this challenge that are faced by this economy. The first one is the issue of production, right? Getting this economy to produce and 
actually attracting more, more you know more investment in agriculture and particularly in mining which are the key sectors there is not enough happening there the other thing is dealing with the issue of corruption right which to date has not really been dealt with as as one would have expected so to me those are the two key issues that are going to make sure, right, number one, this economy begins to change direction. Number two, we begin to attract, uh, uh, you know, uh, investment. And number three, we begin to create jobs. I keep repeating on this. You cannot go to a person who is sitting somewhere who is jobless and tell them, listen, our economic policies have been successful. The, the, one thing I've noticed in this economy, we don't measure job creation. If you look at all the uh, developed economies, uh, elections are based on the jobs that presidents create. Here, we, you know, we, are, we don't have a constant index, index that actually measures how, much, how many jobs we've created this, because that is critical to the revival. Now, as I'm telling you, we've got another challenge in that this is a highly informalized economy. So sometimes economic policy has very little impact. For example, if you look at the tax issues, we've got a highly informal sector that is not paying taxes. And the, the minister comes through and says, listen, he's, 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 he's reduced tax, tax, income tax to individuals. But a lot of people are not on the payroll and it doesn't affect them. So how do we make sure that this economy moves away from a inf highly informalized economy to a more formal economy so that economic policy can start having uh, more mm -hmm. impact on what is happening on the ground. So I don't expect a significant change in direction with the National Development Plan. I hope it's not going to be another Zim asset. Zimbabwe has had 14 economic blueprints since 1980. And today we're still speaking of reviving agriculture. We're still speaking of beneficiation in mining. We're still speaking of value addition. We're still talking about import substitution, things we've been talking about for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So what do we, if, if I can close quickly, it's the implementation and the capacity to implement our policy. That will always be a challenge. Over to you, Mr. Nkwe. What do you mm. think about what you said? Okay, if, if, I'm, if I'm to chip in and, uh, and actually discuss some of the points he has raised, uh, I think in terms of uh, us as a country, in terms of preparing for the national development strategy, I think the foundation has been set. I think the the principles and the pillars have been set by the transitional stabilization program. We have stabilized the macroeconomy, like I've said, we've stabilized the fiscal sector, we've stabilized the monetary sector. And in terms of ease of doing business, actually Zimbabwe is now rated uh, in top five in Africa in terms of the reforms of doing business by the World Bank. In, in the world, you are actually in, in top 20. And uh, my hope is that in the, in, in the medium to long term, that can actually help the country in, uh, in actually attracting investment. And we have seen improvement in infrastructure, the key infrastructure that actually is also it is an absorber of uh, foreign direct investment. We have seen improvements in that. And uh, there is also uh, uh, another thing that we need to discuss, that I can actually raise up, which is uh, on the aspect of, uh, of, 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 of some reforms uh, uh, we've seen um, uh, certain reforms being done in, this, in, in the state on, in, on the enterprise, like I've have, I have discussed in the first segment. We've also seen some uh, some some reforms with the the previous uh, uh, IPA, the previous um, uh, Public Order and Security Act, uh, which we actually uh, some were actually arguing that they were hindering in terms of the social uh, social and ease of doing business in the country as well as the reforms in terms of uh, registering a company. We've seen improvements in that the turnover time that you take in when you get into a country and try to actually register a company and get a license. We've seen uh, the, the, the local council reducing license, license for business operations uh, in the past year. So I think the principles or the foundations have actually been laid by the transition or stabilization program although we did not fully achieve all the targets that we had set as a country uh, given the circumstances that we have discussed earlier on but i think it is a platform the way a national development strategy can actually be built from because uh, the necessary foundations for the economy to, to, to actually develop have actually been achieved which is stability although we did not realize growth in the past uh two years mm -hmm. coming to you mr msevi President Emerson Mnangagwa actually said that he's ad identified mining and agriculture as the two key sectors that are going to bring the country to the economic turnaround. And these are the sectors that obviously we're trying to look into. How do you, uh, probably for you, what needs to be done to complement efforts in terms of uh, achieving economic turnaround? Okay, the, 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 we have to be clear what agriculture is and what mining is. The key area we have to focus in Zimbabwe is industrialization uh, because if we focus in agriculture 
currently as we mainly rely on tobacco exports and cotton and and we rely on the mining sector on gold and platinum and nickel we cannot have an economy that is too dependent on the export of primary commodities because we then become you know uh, 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 kind of uh, we, you know we get affected by external pricing international but prices that industry is fed by agriculture and, and and mining yes it is so what i'm saying is if we don't industrialize yeah, you know, it, it doesn't, you can industrialize without having agriculture. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not only agriculture that leads to industrialization. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Although agriculture does feed the industrialization. But we need, to me, what one fundamental issue we lack is an industrial, in a more aggressive industrialization strategy where we are saying, let's move away from lo the low-wage agriculture, let's move away from pri primary products and begin to produce uh, products that create local jobs and that cut imports of finished goods so that we can actually create local wealth. The Minister of Industry and Commerce should actually be more aggressive than they have been to date. We should get the Minister of Industry and Trade being at the forefront of, I, I hope that will be the case, for example, in the National Development Plan. So it's all and good to say agriculture and mining, but let's be very specific what in agriculture. Let's reduce primary, primary uh, exports right, of, of, of products in agriculture. Let's beneficiate locally. We trade jobs. It means we have to, you know, to bring in more technology. But more, more important, you know, we keep going to this, which is an issue we are not really addressing in this discussion. The issue of corruption remains the number one enemy of any economic development in this country. And to me, we haven't really been too serious in making sure we, we address that issue. Mm -hmm. As we round off this discussion, Mr. Mkobe, what is your response to what you said? Okay, um, I, I think as a country, we need to look at our strength. We need to look at our weaknesses. As much as we, we cry for industrialization, I think in our industrialization needs to be more focused. What are really our com comparative advantages in? We, we are actually an agro-based economy. We have one of the best climates in the world. We, are, we actually have uh, large deposits of, um, of minerals like we have alluded to. So I think industrialization needs to be directly linked with those uh, key primary sector products like, 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 like my colleague has actually alluded to. That is uh, um, agriculture and, and in terms of mining. Uh, but I think that is ag addressed by the uh, national develop national industry development strategy, which was crafted by by the Minister of Industry. And um, in the budget consultations, I have seen a communication from Treasury where they are actually acknowledging that they had neglected the the, the the national industry development strategy, where they were giving priority to TSP. But they are going to look into that when they are actually doing their <coughs> consultations for the 2021 budget. So. I think in terms of industrialization as a country and most of the uh, us as economists, we have always been saying we need productivity, we need production. But where can we really have a comparative advantage? I can take an example for for example Japan. After after the, the World War Two, they had a focus on what they wanted to do as an economy, we wanted to be a technology based economy. It is it is. So as a country like Zimbabwe, yes, we need industrialization. It is very important to drive the economy. But uh, actually, the president was I actually concur with the president that we need to focus on mining as well as agriculture but um the pillars one of the pillars under the the, the national development strategy is value addition and beneficiation mm -hmm. so it's not just only focusing on mining and exporting but in future there is like in national development strategy its intended targets is to actually make sure that there is value addition and beneficiation in those key sectors mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time and I want to thank you gentlemen for joining me for this discussion. That was Mr. Mukowo and Mr. Vince Msev who joined us in our episode today where we were talking about the, net, the transitional stabilization program which was introduced by the government of Zimbabwe in October 2018. Until next time, pleasant viewing.